Reading Recovery is a program that really saves children at the very beginning of their learning to read. When they start to see that they're struggling, we show those children through a very comprehensive approach how they too can become masterful in the reading process. Ran to the tree. I can go up the big tree too, he said. And what did little chimp do? He went what? Up, up, up. Went little chimp. It gives these students a boost so that the research shows that after this intensive work over a few weeks that these students get to be at least the average of the first grade class and most importantly they believe they are successful readers and so they don't bring that concept that I can't do this. They know they can do that and they continue to be successful without further interventions. Are you going to play with me? said Gus. No, said that kitten. I am sleeping. So what happened when Gus was ready to play? Uh, he said this. He asked the question, didn't he? He said, are you going to play with me? And the kitten said no. Why? Because the kid is doing what he did first. <gasps> and what was that? The kitten. What was the kitten doing that Gus was doing at the beginning of the story? Sleeping. He was sleeping on the chair, just like Gus was. So they kind of switched what they were doing, didn't they? First the kitten wanted to play and Gus didn't, and then at the end of the story, who wanted to play? Him. Gus wanted to play. At the, at the 12, at the this page, she's... The, the kitten says no. That's right. Where does it say no? Right there. No, said the kitten. There was one word in here that I wanted to practice because it's a word that doesn't really, you can't sound it out when you get there. And it's the word R. Can you find the word R? It's right there. And it starts with a capital A, so we can write it either with a capital A or with a lowercase a. Do you want to write it on the board for me? It's extraordinary in terms of what we can do in a very intensive way to really help children never require additional remediation. They become one of those readers like everyone else in the class. A reading recovery requires a year-long training. And you either get it from a teacher leader or you get it from a trainer. The kitten wanted to play with Gus. Gus said no. So it's two whole sentences. All right, let's see what you can do with this one. The kitten wanted to play with Gus. All right, I'm going to mix it up. You build that one. Can you read it for me? The kitten wanted to play with Gus. Very good. Reading recovery takes the lowest achieving first grade children. So you assess children. We have a, an assessment called the observation survey. We give it to a lot of children, so they're the lowest children. But that doesn't mean they all know the same thing or do the same things. They're very individualized. So reading recovery is an individualized one-on-one, -on -one, you might call it a tutoring program for those children. And it's been around for 30 years. So we have a certain lesson format that we follow. Going is, is, I mean, is single eating the shell fish? No, he is not. We have a set of books that we draw from to read from that is common across the county. We have a common set of activities that we might use for teaching. 
So those are what the teachers are learning, but most importantly, it's a moment by moment decision-making process. Given what I see this child do with this book, with this word, at this moment, what would be the most powerful thing for me to do to shift the child's learning? Um, I would say this is a very powerful, very intense professional development um, because this is the first time we've been given this opportunity where you come to a professional development one day a week, every week, and we spend from 8.30 to 11.30 in an intense instructional setting learning from each other and looking at the research that is out there that tells us how this child's reading can improve by you know, employing these strategies. One of the requirements of the Reading Recovery Program, wherever it is at any school, is that the district has a site for training. And that site, there are very uh, specific specifications for a window to go in. On one side, it's a mirror. On the other side, it's dark in the room, but it's a one-way window that you can see into what's happening behind the mirror. It also has uh, sound specifications, so there's a microphone in the mirrored area that can be transmitted into the training area. The teacher, we call her behind the glass with a child because she is actually sitting there with a child who has no idea they're being observed. The, key, the teacher, of course, does. <laughs> so uh, they, they very quickly get into really having an authentic lesson with their child, no matter how nervous they might be. And you, you might hear them talk about, oh, they're going to be observed. But it ends up being such an opportunity for training. You're, you're kind of nervous. Very. Especially, especially being educators, because we know exactly, as educators, we're always evaluating instruction. <laughs> you know, from teachers, from students, we're always self evaluating I guess it's like self-monitoring, like we teach the students to self-monitor. You know, to be on the other side of that glass, we are self-monitoring as well. Yeah. But the unique part about the glass is they can see you, but you really are focusing on the child that you're working with, so you kind of in a way can not worry so much about what the people right. on the other side are doing. You're, you're engaged one-on-one -on -one with that child. Which is good because once you go in that room and you close the door, it's just like being back at your home school and it's just you and the child. The child is ready to learn and then you just, as teachers do, we do what we do. Okay. <laughs> we just start teaching. You see, when you read like this, it's very hard to comprehend. Yeah. Okay? It's all about comprehension, and you lose that. Oh, 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 said mom, mom, I don't, I, I, I do not like spiders. All right, she just did brain work. That's a good reader brain work. Did you hear her do it? What did she do? Um, she reread. She yeah. made it wrong. She got it wrong, and then she noticed it herself. She monitored it and reread it and fixed it herself. Please, please, can I? So her brain's working in the way we need it to work. It's just not working fast enough. Okay, that's that's it. We did not teach behind the glass for six long weeks until we learned to work together. They learned to trust me, that I wasn't gonna throw them under the bus. And we learned to work together and they have to have, there's two of them in a school. That was my first stipulation. They can't be a single reading recovery teacher in the school alone because they need their partner there, that they're you know, doing the same thing. So they're getting to the point where they can talk about what they're doing better. So let's make play first. This word is play. And what happens when we add that? Uh, play. Slide it up and we'll check it. Play. 
playing. Playing. K. So, and I like, you did a great job. You were trying very hard to figure this word out. I like how you got your mask and you were looking at it. You, you masked the S, looking for the part that you know. So if we look at this word, I masked it. What is that word now? Come. Come. And then if I add S, it becomes what? Comes. Comes. Great job. By the end of the year, they're anxious to share more with their colleagues. They're excited about what they've learned to do. You know, the children we saw today were reading. They might be reading simple books, but they were reading. They were not in August. So it's due to these teachers that they've come a long way. Where they've been going dink, 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 and we're trying to get them to dink, to dink. Teddy. We're trying to change their rhythm you as are, they're moving along. You are absolutely right. We spent two weeks teaching them how to point to words, mm -hmm. to look at words, and to point under the words and do it and match it, didn't we? Mm -hmm. That was the first thing we did. And now what are we doing? Changing it completely. Because in order to get the brain started, you have to do one by one to get it started. But in order to really read, you've got to now take that away and learn to read in chunks. So mid-learning, mid-learning is where that occurs. The way that teachers learn best is really no different than the way children learn best. They learn best when they can engage with the learning material. They can have an experience in the learning, um, the learning opportunity. So a reading recovery training where teachers are engaged with each other in brainstorming, led by an expert, led by a facilitator who knows exactly, just like a great teacher in a classroom, knows exactly what those teachers need. Professor McGee does the same thing with those reading recovery teachers, but she allows them to engage in a lot of discovery learning too, because they are actually experiencing the training instead of it being fed to them. If we're gonna introduce it as a new word, saw as a new word in the story, we have to predict, Thank you. Locate okay. and check it. So predict what letter do you expect to see? Search for that letter. There it is. Now check it. They're engaged in conversation right then. It's a right now kind of conversation about, so what did you see? Why did she do that? What could she have done? That right now kind of training is exactly what they're looking for in the teacher with the student when they're not being observed. Those teachers are learning to sit side by side that child and right then they're thinking of ways that that child, skills that that child needs, strategies that that child needs to become a better reader. and there's really no way to prepare for what they're going to say. I mean, we can set it up. This is where we think it might go, but you have to go with what the kids Right, and I, and I think some might think that Reading Recovery is a scripted program, and it is not a scripted program. It's basically, we're getting the book, and as the child is reading, that's when they make a mistake, that's when we get our instruction for that mistake to correct it. Read what we have. The seagull is clever. He dropped the... Okay, how do we spell the? T-H-E. Okay, write it here. Make sure we remember. Right here. Okay. T -A -T -T -H -E. That would be what you would see if you were to come into our classroom on any given day for that 30 minutes. We follow that procedure. We, we start with a familiar read and then we work on a book that they've done the day before. We, do, we, we code it to score it and see where their errors are and what kind of um, errors they're making. 
and then from there we work on writing. Writing is a really important part. It goes hand in hand with the reading. So what we're reading about, we're also writing about. And then we end it with a new book to get us ready for the next day. And no one has talked about this part of the training, and that is I go to their schools and sit beside them and watch them teach lessons. So I think the aha's for me is how critically important those school visits are to their learning. I mean, yes, it happens in class. Yes, it happens behind the class. But those behind the class were set up to be successful. No. The only person who can learn to read is a child. You know, it's, it's what happens in their brain. And as teachers, we can show them words and we can show them how letters and sounds go together and we can even pull out a perfect book, but the only person who can read is that child. And I'm the only one other than those two teachers who saw those two children on Tuesday. And I want to tell you, those were different children than we saw on Tuesday. They were more confident. Their teachers were more confident. Those children were able to take on more things, and it's because the teaching is powerful. Little chimp is brave, and what does brave mean? That means they're not scared of anything. They're not scared of anything. Little chimp is brave. Mother chimp went up and the other really cool part of this program is those reading recovery teachers, they don't hold back all that they know with just working with their little reading recovery students. They are going back to their schools, sharing with their grade level teams, so they're part of the first grade team. They engage in professional development. Every time that team meets, they can instill a little tip. Uh, Dr. McGee is also going to present for the Sarasota Reading Council so that teachers district-wide can come and learn strategies for struggling readers. The, the tentacles of this program are far-reaching. The Reading Recovery Program is now in 10 title schools. Last year only three. It's expanded. Thank you to our donors. We are very, very appreciative. So thanks to the Gulf Coast Community Foundation, Keith and Linda Monda, the Charles and Marjorie Brancic Foundation, we have this program now in 10 schools. We're probably the only one in the state of Florida that probably has an intense reading recovery professional development and have the classrooms at, at the five Title I schools. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're just happy to be a part of it and we, we're just happy that the students are now being given that extra hand to help them to become a better reader. I am a true believer in this program and so I want our teachers to really have the opportunity for this type of professional development. So I plan to volunteer, if nothing else, to help continue the work in, in their schools when they go to another school and have time for this quality professional development to support our teachers' learning. I think I realized that I could always become a better teacher, just as these teachers, even that master teacher, admits there are things we continue to learn about these techniques. And so it really provides that collaboration and a feeling that together we can become better and better to help our students.